movieweb.com. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi. Cotton here. Ambassador, uh, you remember my eldest son, David? David, the heir apparent, of course. Look at her. She's perfect. What do you mean by perfect? I mean that there's nothing that I do that she doesn't like. She doesn't know you long enough. You're enjoying a very hard fact of life, David. What's that? She's never going to be one of us. Isn't that great? Well, I wanted to begin by asking, you know, the movie is its kind of like a couple of different movies. You know, it's sort of as a love story and then it becomes this thriller. And so I was just curious about sort of balancing all those different um, moods and tones and not giving too much away early on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we tried to to follow the beats of the of, of the true story um, that inspired this movie because it was such an extraordinary story that the audience has naturally grabbed and and sort of dragged from one one step to the next. And I think that um, we knew also when we were developing the script that people would leave the movie and say, well, obviously that couldn't possibly have really happened because it's so amazing that the different phases of the film, the different phases of the story. Um, but that's kind of what makes it so so remarkable. And it's probably what draws me to true stories because, you know, you have this wealth of information and there are scenes in the movie that um, we could never have written. You know, there's no way you could uh, create some of those scenarios. And so the audience, I think, is just so consistently surprised by it. The idea was to have the audience feel sort of the way that I felt when I was learning the story to begin with. Well, and there, were there any liberties that you took with the true story? Was there anything that you had to sort of adjust cinema for cinematic reasons or? You know, I mean, we obviously we, we, we wanted to make a film that, you know, in 90 minutes or so would convey 30 years of history. So it, it required a lot of, um, uh, just a, a lot of careful editing to make sure that we weren't giving anyone more than they needed and always leaving the audience feeling like they were maybe a quarter of a step behind so that you really engage your mind all the time and you think like, wait a second, did I miss something? Oh no, actually I just figured out what that was. You know, that's sort of exciting for me as a moviegoer to see that. Yeah, uh, and then um, Kristen, uh, Kristen gives such a great performance and, and it makes Katie such a lovable character. Um, I was just curious sort of about her creating that role and was it important to have the audience really fall in love with her and feel for her so that when sort of things happen throughout the movie, they're invested in that character. Well, that character, I think, is, um, you know, in many ways the most important character in the movie, and, it's the, and, and, and Kirsten's character is the character we're most invested in, I think. Um, and I think choosing her as the actress was such a, um, a critical decision. It was something we did before we did anything else. We cast Kirsten before we cast anyone in the movie. and. Um, we were looking for somebody who not only had the acting ability, not only had the, um, I think, the moment in Kirsten's career right now where she's ready to be taken seriously in that, in that way, where she's ready to sort of come out. But we also knew that we wanted somebody who felt real. We wanted somebody who, you know, with Kirsten's little slightly crooked teeth and her sort of very natural way, this is a girl who's not trying to turn herself into a movie star in real life or in, uh, uh, or in the film. You know, this is a girl who you would believe um, could be a girl from sort of a modest background on Long Island and uh, somebody that you could fall in love with, especially if you were the heir to this giant uh, real estate fortune in New York, you might find a girl like this very appealing, and I think that uh, I think that he does. And then uh, Ryan creating that character, I mean, he's so good in the movie, um, and obviously he has to sort of do the makeup thing kind of towards the end. Uh, could you talk about him creating that character and, and sort of working on that role? Yeah, well, you know, I think Ryan, um, you know, is such an extraordinarily deep actor, but also has this terrific work ethic. And the two of them, you know, have both been acting since they were kids. And so when they come to the set, um, they're not just bringing their, their talent, but they're bringing tremendous amount of experience. And they knew they were up against major challenges here. That for him, the idea of not only playing somebody who's so different from himself, but also somebody who evolves in such unusual ways, and in fact, you know, at some points in the movie is going to be in his late 50s. Um, uh, that's something we could never have done, even 10 years ago. Even technologically, you couldn't, right. you couldn't uh, um, show somebody like Ryan Gosling aging that much 
uh, without a kind of technological achievement that, that wasn't in existence back then. You have to let me go. Pretty wife, rich husband, it'll be all over the six o'clock news. Dad? Why couldn't you just have given her what she wanted? Husbands lie all the time. We had a deal. All good things. If anything happens to me, don't let them get away with it.